two years ago, I was exactly where you are now. But today, I'm here to share with you the exact steps that took me from having no savings at all to a 10K safety net and how I did that in one year. So if you're new here, I'm Steve. I'm a commercial finance manager with a computer science background. But on this channel, we look at financial best practice to help ordinary people like me and you get a handle on our money. Mm -hmm. So if we break it down to its basic saving 10K in one year means saving $833 a month, $192 a week, or $27.40 a day. But you might still be thinking, well, that sounds still like a lot of money. Is that really doable? How am I gonna figure out where in my spending I can make those kinds of savings? Oh, well, I asked all those same questions too, but for me, having a computer science background, I knew that I needed to have data to act. So we're gonna look at a data-driven approach, the one that I use to identify where you can cut back, how you can get lean on your spending, so that at the end of a year, you too can have that 10K sitting in your bank. Step one, what do we spend our money on and how much are we spending? We might all be unique individuals, but we all spend our money on the same kinds of things. And the US Bureau of Labor tells us that these are things like housing, transport, food, insurance, tax, and discretionary spending. But what sets us apart is how we allocate our money to these categories. We all have different patterns of spending across them. So if you're ready for a reality check, here's what the average spending looks like across the categories. So the largest is housing at 33% of monthly income, followed by transport at 16%, food at 12%, uh, insurance at 5%, tax at 15%, and discretionary spending at 20%. To make this more concrete, let's take uh, somebody with a salary of say 30K a year. So now we switch out the percentages for the actual dollar amount that people spend each month in these categories. So that's 825 on housing, 400 on transport, food is at 300, insurance at 125, tax is at 375, and that discretionary spending is at $500 a month. Now, don't forget, this is for somebody on 30K a year. If you're on more than that, it'll be different. If you're on less than that, it will also be very different. In fact, for reference, here's a list of different income bands ranging from 30K to 100K, each with their own average spending amounts across the categories. Now, you might want to stop the video and take a screenshot so you can find your own salary band to compare to your actual. So this gives us an idea of where our money goes on a monthly basis. Because what we'll look at next is how this breaks down per day across the categories, because doing this helps paint a really you know, vivid picture of our financial habits and helps pinpoint where we can intercept and reroute funds into our savings. Okay, step two. Right, but going down to the day level, we're gonna see how much we need to save to hit our goal. So given we wanna save $27.04 a day, let's take a look at the spend per day to see what that actually looks like. So again, for that 30K salary, here's the spending per day across all of those categories. So you've got $27.50 on housing, $13.33 on transport, $10 on food, $4.17 on insurance, $12.50 on tax, and $16.67 on discretionary spending. So for a person on a 30K a year salary, you can actually see the challenge here. They're only spending on average around $84 a day. And reducing that by $27 a day is a nearly 33% reduction in their daily spend. So if you're on less than 30K a year, the challenge is going to be even harder. Of course, it gets easier the higher up the salary band you are. And actually, here's a picture across all of those bands that we looked at earlier. And so you can see a person on 40K a year has to make a 24% reduction and somebody on 100K a year, well, they only need to make a 10% reduction, which is much easier. To make this even more concrete, let's assume that we'll make a flat reduction across all the categories to see by how much each has to be reduced to hit the $27 target. So for a person on 30K a year salary, here are the original spending amounts for each category, the amount it needs to be reduced by, and the new amount required for each category after the reduction. And just for completeness, well, here's the same set of reductions applied to all the other salary bands. Again, you might want to pause the video and screenshot the image for your own records. So this data gives us all the information we need to understand where our money is going and by how much we need to reduce our spending across the categories to get to our target saving amount of $27.40. So without this data, we can't really get any insights at all, and it's critical as a first step to reaching our goal. 
But it begs the question, how can we go about making these savings? We might know where and by how much we need to reduce our spending, but exactly how do we go about achieving that? Well, we'll take a look at that next. Step three, how exactly can we save in each of those categories? So we've got the data to hand to make the adjustments we need to reach the goal within a year, but how do we define a set of actions that will take us from where we are to where we want to be? So to do this, we have to take a look in detail into each of the spending categories and explore the options available to us. Now, not all options and suggestions I'm about to give you will work for you, and I can't be exhaustive about it either. So take the following tips as inspiration and use them to explore the possibilities open to you for carving out the necessary savings you need to reach your 10K goal. Right, so in housing, a person on a 30K a year salary, the target is to save just short of $9 a day. Now the biggest item under housing will normally be your rent and mortgage payment. And this is very hard to change at short notice and will take some time and planning to reduce. But still, by exploring cheaper accommodation, perhaps in different areas, you can potentially save a lot of money and changing this alone could get you close to your savings target. So next will be your utility bills, which includes electricity, gas, water, and maybe internet and cable. For metered usage utilities like electricity and gas, well, by turning down your thermostat by just one degree, you can save up to 10% on your bills, and it's a simple thing to try. For non-metered utilities like telephone and internet, well, then you must start shopping around for cheaper deals. Do you really need all those gigabytes on your data plan? Can you save by shifting to a lower tariff on your cable? Can you cut the cable entirely? They might all seem small, but they will add up. And don't forget, we're only looking to save about $9 a day. So next is maintenance and repairs, which includes the regular upkeep and any repairs you need on your home, such as plumbing, electrical, lawn care, landscaping, or structural repairs. Many of these expenses can be avoided entirely if you can just get into the habit of performing regular checks and upkeep of things in your home. Spotting issues early can save you a ton of money and many things can be tackled by yourself with a bit of DIY knowledge, which can potentially save you hundreds of dollars in repair fees. So the next category we have is transport. And for many of us, transport means one thing, it means our cars, you know, how we all love our cars. But the average American is spending $700 on car payments a month, and many are now reporting $1,000 a month on car cost. Now you might need to ask yourself the question, am I driving a car that I can actually afford? So an easy way to check to see if you've bought too much car for your income is to see if its total cost is more than 35% of your gross annual income because this is the maximum recommended amount to spend on a car in fact for many that maximum should be as low as 25 percent or if you're financing your car did you follow the 24 10 rule which states you should have put down at least a 20 percent down payment on the car and you shouldn't be financing it for more than a four-year term and crucially for us here your monthly payment should not be more than 10 percent of your gross monthly income and if you didn't follow these guidelines or were unaware of them then it could be that the car you're driving is a significant drain on your finances and you might want to start planning on moving to a more affordable car food so the target saving here is $3.26. The food category excludes eating out as that goes into discretionary spending. So it accounts for things like groceries and food shopping and cooking at home. Ways to save here are to become a member of wholesalers like Costco. You know, this allows you to then save in by buying in bulk. Also, you can look to local markets and cheaper supermarkets that can significantly reduce your weekly food bill. Here's a list, in fact, of the top six cheapest food retailers in the US, according to delish.com. And you'll notice that Whole Foods, well, it's nowhere to be found. So next is insurance and warranties with a target savings of $1.36 per day. Insurance can vary a lot between providers. So to save money here, you should use online tools to compare rates from a bunch of them to see if you can beat what you already have. There's money to be saved too if you can bundle or combine insurances across categories like car, home, or contents. Another thing you can do is to work on increasing your credit score, as this will give you much better insurance quotes across any kind of insurance that you're after. Now, a bugbear of mine is extended warranties. In many cases, they're just not needed and they're a complete waste of money. Many products aren't gonna fail within the extended warranty period. So if you fall for the extended warranty pitch, well, in my view, you're just throwing money away. A better approach is to do what's called self-insure, which is nothing more than setting aside what you would have paid into a warranty 
into but putting it into a high yield savings account for potential repairs and replacements later on. Now you probably spend a lot less over the lifetime of the item than you would have done and the cash saved could be used for other emergencies too if needed. Finally, don't forget it's quite possible your credit card already offers free extended warranty protection for anything you bought with it. So check that out and see if you can cancel any warranties you bought. Next we've got tax with a target saving of $4.07 per day. Now this is all about keeping more of what you earn instead of letting the tax man get his grubby little hands on it. So going through all the ways that you can save on tax would need its own video, but up here's a great video on just that topic and I'll link it in the description too below. But to be brief, you wanna be sure that you're maximizing your tax efficiency by fully making use of your employer's pension scheme or 401k. That way you're able to save your money before any tax is taken off. Also, if you own a business, make sure you're claiming all you can as tax deductible. And maybe even invest in a tax account to be sure that you're being as tax efficient as you can with your income. Next, we'll look at discretionary spending, which has a target saving of $5.43. And it's here that most of us will be able to make the most savings. Here's a list, for example, of all the things that go into this bucket that most people agree they would be willing to make cutbacks on. And you can see all the usual suspects are there, eating out, smoking, buying clothes, credit card interest, and so on. Most of us would agree, I think, that these items are ideal candidates for cutting back, if not quitting entirely. So going back to our data, here's the most common set of discretionary spending categories and how much each makes up of the overall 20% this category contributes to our total spending. And here's the total amount the average person spends on those categories across all the income bands we've looked at before. And here's the breakdown by day. Now again, you might wanna take a screenshot for reference. Now, if you remember, the amount that we needed to reduce this category for a 30K salary was in total $5.43. So in this area, we need to find just over $5 in savings. Okay, so if we halved our daily spending on eating out, well, that would give us a $3 saving straight away. And then maybe we could do the same with entertainment. Well, that would be another $2.50. So in fact, we're there, but we could hold off also on buying any clothes for a year. That would easily get us over the target by saving another $3. So making just these adjustments, we're already there at $8.50. So I think we're good to go already on this category. So now that we've covered off each category and explored possible ways to save, I hope you feel encouraged that it is in fact possible and that our target of 10K is achievable. It might not be easy or especially comfortable, but it is possible. Now, for me, how I managed to get to my 10K target was to mostly cut back on car spending and discretionary expenses. I downgraded my car to something much more affordable, and this contributed a large part of my $27 a day reduction. I also practically stopped buying clothes for a whole year, and by cutting down on eating out too, well, it all helped a lot towards making my target daily reduction. But of course, everybody will be different, right? And your reductions won't look like the list we've just seen, or like my own set of reductions. The point is though, is that you have the data now to make those decisions for yourself and carve out your own set of reductions, which I hope is helpful. But there's still one unanswered question, which brings us to step four. How do we execute the act of saving? Knowing what spending you're gonna reduce is one thing, but how you're gonna execute that savings behavior is another. If your plan is to cut back over a month and then ton up the savings at the end before putting it into a savings account, then you might want to think again, because Parkinson's law tells us that any task will consume the amount of time given to it. If I give myself two days to make this video, then I'll spend two days making it. If I give myself half a day, then somehow I'll still manage to get it done, and there probably won't be too much trade-off in quality. Well, the same rule can be applied to personal finance and money. If we give ourselves access to money, we'll typically find a way to spend it. If I wait to the end of the month to bank any savings I have, by the time the month ends, I'll all too predictably have already spent it on the things I don't really need. Now to counter this quirk of human psychology, we should apply the pay yourself first principle, which tells us to immediately take out the amount we intend to save from our paycheck as soon as we get it and put that money in a really difficult to access savings account. Trust me, by doing this, by removing the money from your options, you'll learn to live without it and you will make ends meet because I know I did it. So once you've managed to figure out where and how much you can save across those categories we've looked at, be sure to take that amount from your income each month as soon as you get paid. Put it into a high yield savings account and forget about it. I promise you by doing this, by the time one year has passed, 
you'll have that 10K at your disposal and the why that lies behind all of this effort will be fulfilled. So we haven't even talked about how you can help speed up your journey to 10K by increasing your income, which is the other side of the coin. But this video here shows you how to do just that with 10 honest side hustles that really work. No BS, just good old fashioned work that people would prefer to pay to get done rather than do it themselves. So check it out.